Good evening, everyone. Um, can everyone hear me? Do I need to talk a little bit closer? You can just tell me to move forward if I'm not loud enough. So today I'm going to talk to you about the urban and community forest. So I'm going to give you kind of a brief overview of what it is, go into a little bit about some of the challenges we've been facing with that, go into sort of what the city has been doing in terms of addressing those challenges, and then ways that you can help us in the future um, make a more sustainable urban and community forest. So first, when we talk about that, you may be wondering what exactly we're talking about. And we're talking about all the vegetation, basically the woody vegetation, the trees and woody vegetation within the city. And about 25% of that is on public property, and the remaining 75% is on private property. So just keep that in mind. We can do what we can as a city entity in terms of managing that resource, but the majority of that resource is on private property. So we have an estimated 1.45 million trees in Ann Arbor. So we had um, um, an iTree eco analysis done, um, and that's a US Forest Service um, program that helps to quantify the benefits of the urban and community forest. And so they estimated that Ann Arbor has 1.45 million trees, and that's both on public and private property. And then we have an urban tree canopy of 33%. So that's when you're viewing the city from above, that's the area of the city that's covered with leaf basically with trees. So in terms of the city managed resource, we have um, just over 43,000 street trees. We have um, about 6,900 park trees in mode areas. So these are the manicured areas of the city. Um, they represent over 200 different species. Um, and they provide $4.6 million in benefits to the community each year. So for instance, the stormwater benefit, they are street trees and park trees and mowed areas provide um, $65 million in storm, or 65 million gallons of stormwater they intercept each year. So that's a significant amount, so that's just something to consider if just the 43,000 street trees and 6,900 park trees do that, can you imagine just looking at the entire community, kind of what the stormwater benefit those trees provide? So the city's current management activities, we're focusing primarily on tree removal, tree planting, but we don't really have any routine or proactive pruning. Um, and so I'm gonna kind of go into the reason how we kind of got into this, these current management activities. So we've had really two serious challenges over the last decade. And so I know everyone's really familiar with Emerald Ash Borer, so we lost about 10,000 street and park trees when Emerald Ash Borer came through. So the biggest, obviously, most obvious impact to everyone was that we lost 10,000 trees. But the other issue is, is that our entire resources in terms of staff and funding for forestry-related issues went towards the removal of those hazardous trees. And so we really deferred maintenance on all the other remaining resource. Um, the other issue that we obviously um, had was budget reductions. Just the economic downturn in 2008 caused budget reductions, and we're still kind of trying to get our you know, legs back under us and trying to, you know, get that budget back up again. So those two activities really had a big impact on our, basically, the city-managed population. So leading to, a, well, like I said, a deferment in maintenance and really placing the health and condition of our urban and community forest at risk. So here, ooh, ooh I thought I was hitting the pointer. So here, um, this is just in terms of street trees, we have a backlog in kind of a bunch of our maintenance activities. You know, specifically, um, the biggest issue is the routine pruning. So we have about 38,000 trees that need some type of routine pruning, and it's just something that we need to start addressing. So that kind of sets the stage for what the city has now started to do. So we began the process um, of developing our first urban and community forest management plan. So the plan is going to help us address the effects of these challenges that we faced over the last decade, but it's also going to help us sustain, sustainably manage this asset into the future and make it really an important community asset because we understand how much everyone in the community values this resource. Um, and it's also going to help us maximize those benefits. So as I mentioned, they provide the city managed trees provide $4.6 million in benefits each year. We want to help increase that and really maximize the benefits those trees provide. So um, we do have um, some goals for the plan, and they really align with the city's sustainability framework. So we, we worked with um, Jamie Kidwell and um, our environmental 
um, coordinator and working on uh, making sure that when we were developing the urban and community forest management plan that we were really including the sustainability framework and kind of making sure that our goals align with that. So it really aligns with the healthy ecosystems goal of the sustainability framework. And so we do have um, eight goals for the plan. We have one overarching goal, which is this one to the sustainable protection, preservation, maintenance, and expansion of the urban and community forest. Um, and so that really is our overarching goal. And then we have these seven supporting goals that follow that help to achieve our overall goal. So, you know, they range from just developing policies and procedures to develop, have a sustainable urban and community forest, you know, looking for ensuring that we have secure funding um, and engaging the community and building this community support for the urban and community forest. So um, that kind of tells you what we're doing at the city. And now what I really wanted to focus on is how you could help ensure that we continue to have a sustainable urban and community forest. So one is we um, currently have a draft of the plan out for public comment and review, and we're accepting comments through March 28th. So the plan um, is available on the city's website, and there's the website address. Um, and we also have paper copies available um, if you need them. So we are really looking for people to review the plan and provide any comments back to us. That would be the first step in kind of helping of how you can help with that. Um, second is um, the development and the implementation of the plan and creating a sustainable urban forest is going to be, you know, both doing stuff on public and private property. So there are some actions that you can take in order to um, do that. So you can um, support efforts that the city is undertaking to develop a routine maintenance program. Um, you'll probably start hearing more about this after the plan, um, you know, is accepted and we sort of, you know, start moving into implementation. Um, planting trees, you know, we could, you're just looking at your own property, are there opportunities to add to your canopy? Um, you can also start maintaining and pruning existing trees because there's two sort of parts to increase in canopy cover and building a sustainable urban and community forest. One is obviously planting trees, but two, it's maintaining what we already have. So making sure that your trees are properly pruned and so they get to live out their lifespan um, and really being able to provide those maximum benefits. Um, scouting for insects and diseases and notifying city staff if you see anything out of the ordinary. Um, the city does have 35% maple, so that's a really large proportion. To put it into perspective, I think our um, ash tree population was about 15% of the total canopy, so if you think 35% versus 15, and we know what a devastating impact um, emerald ash borer had on the ash population and kind of what happened to the urban and community forest. So it's just something to um, consider. So kind of looking at if you see something unusual that you don't know about and you're concerned about, you know, contacting us to let us know would be really, really great because it's nice for us to have the eyes on the street, you know, since we are not able to be everywhere. Um, preserving and protecting large trees on your property to helping sustaining that canopy and, you know, having existing canopy now is always great. Um, assisting in development of street tree master plans, that is one of the recommendations. So kind of when we do any processes where we need volunteers or you to come in and provide input, providing input on those plans. Um, following urban forest best management practices once they're developed as part of the plan. Um, and then volunteering, you know, getting involved. We do have a citizen pruner program, and so we do offer training. We just actually had our first, or our training for the year in January, and we do uh, have work days where people come out and volunteer to help prune young street trees. So there's a lot of opportunities um, to get involved. I think that's my last one. Oh. And here's just a couple resources I did want to mention if you have anything about tree planting. I did put a couple copies of um, this tree owner's manual. Unfortunately, I brought all that I have left, so if there's no copies left. Um, and then we also have um, it available on the city's website if you wanted to download that. Um, in terms of tree care and pruning and volunteering, so becoming a citizen pruner volunteer, and you can contact me if you're interested in that program. Um, hiring a certified arborist if for some reason, you know, or, you know, there's sometimes trees that are just too big and that are really not good or safe for someone to handle. So contacting a certified arborist to 
help evaluate true trees. Um, and there's Trees Are Good. That's a website that provides a lot of good information. Um, scouting for insects and diseases. We do have sort of common problems that are on the city's website. And then you can also join the city's um, urban forestry email list and you can get kind of updated on the planning process, kind of upcoming programs and any related urban community forestry issues. So that's all of mine. Thank you.